Wow. That was not a decision I was expecting anywhere near this early. But um, sorry, guys, I've, I'm getting the video getting the video a little bit later. But I've literally just come in from work. Um, or not long ago, come in from work and had something to eat. So I think this was the first time I've had a chance to see the news and to react to it. But here we go. So let's get right into the video. You all know why you're here. Um, Sunderland AFC has this evening parted company with head coach Tony Mowbray. The club would like to thank Tony for the positive contribution he's made throughout the past two seasons alongside his assistant Mark Venus, who also departs. Both will always be welcomed back at the Stadium of Light and we wish them well for the future. Christian's Beatman commented, All at SCFC have thoroughly enjoyed working with Tony and he's quite rightly held in high regard by our players and staff and our supporters. After arriving at an uncertain time, thanks Alex Neal, um, he helped guide us to the championship playoffs and it played an important role in developing our team. This was a difficult decision to make, but we remain loyal to our ambition and strategy and we felt now that was the time, the mom right moment to take this step. We are now focused on identifying the right candidate and we will continue to support our coaching team and players throughout the interim period. KLD added, I would also like to play my place on record my gratitude to Tony and all his hard work and commitment to Sunderland, a place where he will always be welcome. As custodians of our great club, we believe in our long-term strategy that we hope will ensure sustainability and success for SCFC. Central to that approach is a relentless demand for a high-performance culture to be implemented throughout the club and the development of a strong playing identity that you, our loyal supporters, can all be proud of. Your continued support will also be, will also be fundamental to that progress and we look forward to seeing as many views as possible at the Stadium Light throughout the festive period and as we enter 2024. And a basic last bit of the statement is that Mike Dodds is going to be coaching the team for the time being. Right, so I'm kind of, let's get right into it. I'm kind of torn on this decision because I like Mowbray and look, it can't be understated. He came in after Alex Neal walked out on us to go to Stoke. And he's obviously got us into those championship playoffs last year and done remarkably well. And when you look at everything he's had to put up with last season, I think it was definitely something that that has to be acknowledged by supporters. Even people who are Mowbray out, I think, have to admit that he's had... I think he's definitely helped us in a good way. And But, now having said that, there's a but here. But I also have noticed little things with him in tactical decisions, in coaching us, especially defensively at the moment. Um, little things like that, I'm starting to feel might prevent him, prevent us or hinder our chances of getting promoted with him. And look, I like Tony Mowbray a lot. I really do like him a lot. But I've always stood by the opinion... I mean, my good friend, I mean, good friend Sean Middleton said this constantly, and unfortunately, I think he's right that there's just little things that could be the difference that would hinder us from getting promoted. Now, I don't expect to get promoted this season, but I feel like either this season or next season we really do need to be trying to get back in the Premier League. And look, we're only three points off the playoffs, and I know there will be some people who think this is a harsh decision, and it could very well prove to be the wrong one. It all depends on the replacement, but for me. I think someone who's better tactically in terms of coaching setup and you know like you look at like you look at some of the goals we've conceded as an example where I think a better coach gets us to not concede those type of goals because I get the impression with Mowbray that he's someone who's look he's quite stubborn and likes to stick to the way he wants to play and at times some of the football we played has been beautiful to watch I've loved it but at the same time I've never felt he was the man long term to get us promoted and I feel like that's the standard he was always going to be judged against after last season. And I know people can say we've lost Ahmad and the squad isn't actually that good, but I disagree with that. I think, in general, the core of the squad, with the exception of Ahmad, is still there. And we've and I think for me, you know, and people come, come about the lack of experience in the team. Well, Ballard's entering his third straight season at this level. Luke 9 whatever people want to say about him, is experienced. Dan Neal, regardless of his age, has played over 100 games now for Sunderland. Jack Clark and Patrick Roberts have had plenty of experience, again, regardless of age at the Championship this season. So, I think whoever we get next is going to hint, depend on whether people will view this as the right decision. As for me, personally, I'm torn because I didn't really like I didn't really like the idea of second Mowbray. Um, but at the same time, for our promotion chances, it probably had to happen. Um, and... Again, it feels horrible saying that, but like I've said, it all depends on the person we bring in next. And to be honest, I'm expecting it to be someone that other supporters won't have heard of. Um, you know, a lot of people are going down this trendy, younger coach sort of route. If you look at Ipswich's Kieran McKenna as a prime example, look at the job he's doing there. I think we wouldn't be surprised me if we get someone like that who's coming in either from an elite club or from abroad who's unknown, but has got a lot of quality as a coach um, and is really highly regarded. So I'm keen to see who they end up bringing in, but... It's going to be an interesting period, that's for sure. Um, and very quickly, because obviously I didn't get a chance to comment on it yesterday, Sunderland draw Newcastle in the FA Cup, which is mental. Like, that was the one fixture I didn't want because I hated Derby games. Even when we were winning them, I didn't like them. 
uh, the build up to them anyway. And look, we know we're not stupid. There's a good chance we will get beaten beat comfortably in this game. But now that we've actually got them, I'm kind of pumped for it because these are the type of games that you kind of live for. And look, if we get beat, but we end up giving them a go and we only narrowly get beat or something, then I think I can not accept it, but I can tolerate it because I don't like the idea of them being miles better than us. But yeah, we'll wait and see what happens with that one. But anyway, regardless... What are your thoughts on the Tony Moby decision? Do you think it's the right one? Do you think it's the wrong one? Do you think it will prove to be right or wrong? And who would you want to bring in? Again, it's all about who will fit into the model that we're trying to do, but also who's good, a better coach than Mowbray tactically. But we'll wait and see. Anyway, guys, I will, as always, love you and leave you. And um, Thanks very much for the support today, because today was the 17th anniversary of my mother's death, um, or yesterday, by the time you're watching this. And thank you for the people who've given me support um, throughout it because it's been a pretty difficult day, to be honest. But um, anyway, guys, you don't want to hear about that. So thanks very much for your support. As you know, trying to get a 5K subscribers. So if, you could, if you're not a regular subscriber and you think I've earned one from you, then hit the subscribe button. It would mean a lot. And yeah, unless, and unless we appoint a head coach before West Brom, see you at the weekend. Take care, everyone. See you later. Love you lots.